And peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> you know, one of these things, I, I love this account here as we look at, at, we look through all the readings that we did this morning that lead us through and point us to what it means to be followers of Christ. What it means for us is we are called to prepare ourselves and prepare our hearts to be able to serve and better be gifts to the community, gifts to the word, world, remembering that the word has saved us. The word has given us that salvation. And here we have, as we go ahead and you read just a little bit further in there, as we go to the second chapter of Luke and we read ahead into Jesus' presentation at the temple, we also see more signs of what God was doing then and what God is still doing today. Imagine, I, you know, I, I still, you look at Simeon and you see this man who is hopeful. He is wanting to go to be with God. He's been faithful all of his life and God has given him a word. How many of us have really listened for a word from God? I mean, God gives each and every one of his followers a word if you listen. It doesn't always come in an audible way. But if you seek out what God is wanting and desiring in your life, in your heart, God is wanting something. He wants you to know something. He wants you to feel his life around him. He wants you to be able to proclaim his truth to those who need to know it. It's not, it's not magic or anything like that. It's just God has gifted every one of his followers. Everyone who believes and trusts in him has been gifted for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Now, some are more aware and more attuned, but there are still many that unfortunately don't seek. The church does not often seek out enough of themselves because we are ordained in our baptisms. We are ordained to ministry when we are marked with that cross of Christ. We are all given a calling. Each and every one of you are a priest. And when we think about what it means to be a priest in the priesthood of all believers, it's a reality in which God has a purpose for each and every one of us to be able to do and fulfill his mission in our, in our community and the circles of influence which God has given to us. And we see in here Simeon is one of those who God has empowered and he has been aware of the power of what God has. And he's been doing the mission God's been calling to. God has given him a, a direct word, a direct revelation in which God has said, I will not take you until the Son of God appears before you. And he is in the temple and the Holy Spirit calls him in. And here we see this wonderful image, this interaction with Mary. And it's more affirmation. You think about this. For Mary and Joseph, over and over, they've been visited by angels. Throughout all this time, they've had all these wonderful signs. They've had the birth of their son. They've had all the shepherds come. They have heard of the proclamation from the angels to the shepherds about why, what was happening and what had occurred. And they came to see the wondrous event. Here they come to the temple to do the good thing that all good Jewish parents will do. They bring their son at eight days old to the temple to be presented and to be circumcised, to be made one of the children of Israel, to keep the law of Abraham. And here they are blessed with great abundance, with the meeting with Simeon, who at this had been waiting and now was filled with such great relief. He has been filled with such great relief because he knows he knows the Son of God is here. He knows the redemption of Israel is here. This, this is something we can all find comfort in in our lives. For those of us that are followers of Jesus Christ, we can find the same comfort in the words of Simeon. Because we also can verify, we can proclaim, we can say with fullness of heart, we can say with full confidence that we have seen the glory, the salvation. We know it because Jesus Christ has come to each and every one of us who believe. And there is nothing to be afraid of. We are at any moment 
those of us who believe are ready or should feel ready to go home. For the moment the Lord desires to call us home, we can declare with confidence, we are ready. We are ready because we know the salvation is before us. There is nothing to fear. We can rest easy in the arms of Christ. We can rest easy in the arms of the Lord. And that is the peace and the hope that we can declare to the world that we are not afraid because we know to whom we belong. I couldn't imagine Anna and her witness, though. Imagine. For seven years, she lived in marriage. She had lived a short of her life. We don't know how old she was when she was married. We, we can assume, we can make estimates, but we know that she is well over 100 years old. And here she is in the temple. She had been there for 84 years. She had been fasting and praying and fasting and praying. And God had filled her with such a spirit that she gave every bit of herself to the service of God. She fulfilled and she was following what was said within scripture of what should occur with one who is widowed. If they cannot, if they do not marry again, it is better for them. So they can focus their lives on God. She had been living in the way and giving her life over to the service of God. Had explored and given it all to him. And she was there and God had given her a word. And God had given her the prophecy to be able to say that God is doing something great. Israel will be restored. And she knew it in her lifetime that it was going to happen. She knew in her lifetime with confidence that this event would occur. And then she saw the fulfillment of it. What a, what, a, what a wonderful witness. Unfortunately, not all of us are given that blessing. We have had generations that have been waiting for the return of Christ. We have had generations that have been waiting and there have been those that have made the foolish attempt of trying to say it's going to happen this time. These are all the signs. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming now. But that's not exactly how God always works. We know as Jesus walked upon the earth, he said that the signs and the time would only be known to the Father. It was not for us to know that we would see suffering. We would see the groanings of the earth. We would see earthquakes. We would see devastation. We would see wars. We would hear war, see wars and hear rumors of war. All of those things have happened and continue to happen. Unfortunately, there are so many hearts that are not ready that are not prepared. There are those that they have this height moment, this, this mountaintop experience, and they feel that God is, is, is with them, and then they come into the world, and all the reality of the world starts to choke them out, and they start to feel all the suffering. They start to feel all the pain. They see all the bad things in the world, and they lose sight of what God is doing and become caught up and lackadaisical and complacent. But see, God desires for us to always be ready, to always be filled with the sense of excitement, the sense of awe, not only on Christmas Day, like many of us often are, especially as we're kids, when we get all those gifts and we open them up, and then the next day, how much are those gifts really of value to you, to the kids usually? I know for the little ones, sometimes they're playing more with the boxes than they are with the toy. We often get so focused on the things that are not important that we lose sight of what truly is important. That Jesus Christ will come again. That there will be a time of reckoning for everyone. There will be a time for us and we are called to be prepared. We are called to always be prepared for the coming of our Lord. And the reality is, is that he will come for all of us one day. Sometimes, some of many of us will meet our end before he returns fully. 
But we will come before him that day. We will come before him. We will hear his judgment. And the prayer is we know we face that judgment without fear because we also know the redemption and the redemption we've received in Jesus Christ. And that is the sure and certain hope that each and every one of us have in our lives. And that is the sure and certain hope that we are called to pass on to the generations following after us. We are called to give that to our children. And we are called to instill that in the hearts of our children, that our grandchildren know it. And that they instill it in the hearts of their children. And then so on and so on for generation to generation. That each and every generation that is born belongs to God. So many times in scripture we look at all the lists of names and we become bored when we read them. We wonder why. Why do we have these lists of names? But each of those names in the Jewish tradition are names that point to the promise of God's fulfillment, of God's fulfillment of his promise to Abraham. That he would have generations. He would have, he would have generations that would span beyond the number of stars or sand. That is... His name, his line would continue on. And for each and every one of us as Christians, as followers of Christ, we are given a promise also that when we raise our children up to fear and love God above all things, to fear, love, and trust God above all things, we are given this glorious wondrous gift to be able to know with confidence that we have passed on the faith to our children that our children should know that God can bring them pain and suffering beyond what we know in this world but ultimately we desire that they know that, that he loves them and that they are to trust him above everything else in this world we're not to put our trust in the things of this world. We're not to put our trust in, in making sure like that, in making sure or that we have everything established to be right with God. We are to put our trust in God himself. We are to not to put our trust in man. We are not to put ourselves our trust in leaders. We're not to put our trust in anyone but God. But we are called to pray for those leaders. We are called to pray for people that will give us good government. And good life. Where man fails, God will not. And that is the glorious gift and promise we receive. You see, Simeon and Anna did not place their trust in the temple. They did not place their trust in the other priests and the other servants. They did not put their trust in the acceptance that everyone would have for them. I'm sure many people looked at Anna and thought she was crazy. She was the crazy old lady in the temple. I just, just don't, don't worry about her. She's she just, just, just nod and smile. But Anna knew. And she didn't care what others thought. But her hope was that others would hear what she had to say. And she knew one day she would see it. God desires for you to have that faith that you know one day you will see it. One day it will be true. One day, and that day is today. That day is every day. That day is every day you breathe, you walk, you know it happens. You know it has happened. You know it will continue to happen. That the Holy Spirit moves amongst us all. The Holy Spirit is calling and drawing us in each and every day. The Holy Spirit is with us. God has entered into his creation. God is with us and he never leaves us. And that is the gift of Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. That we are not left. This is not just some historic event that has passed and now is gone and we just look at it with good memories. But it is present with us every day. Our hearts are filled with Christmas. Our hearts are filled with Christ. Our lives are focused and united in Him. And that is the glorious gift and promise and the hope that you can hang your hat on until the day the Lord calls you home. May you have peace in your hearts each and every day. And may you pass that peace on to all who will hear. 
And may they know through you and through your witness that Christ loves you and he loves his creation and he desires for all to know his forgiveness. He desires for all to know his hope. He desires for all to know his promise because he's not looking down on us. He's not looking down his nose at us and saying, boy, I wish you were so much better. He says, oh, I will make you better. I desire to make you better. Trust in me and you will know you will know my glory. You will know my peace. And may that peace, that glorious peace, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.